fatal car accident at the end of the season, and apparently, unless they've got something up their sleeve, will not return. And Patrick is probably the only man who knows if Patrick Ewing will be back. Would you welcome Patrick Duffy, Bobby Ewing. Beats a man from Atlanta. There you go. You can take those chances in wardrobe. Hey, good fall. Good fall. <laughs> good fall. Well, you're dead, kaput. That's gone it. Gone to heaven. That's it. We think, unless there's a big switch in this. Why, I don't know. Yeah? If they... I've got to figure it out that I... Right. But if Bobby comes back, the doctor has to put those defliberator paddles yeah, yeah. on his face. <laughs> <laughs> About 2,000 volts, and he'll come back looking like yeah. Robert Culp or somebody. How, uh, <laughs> when did you know you were going to be... Uh, actually, you left uh, Dallas yourself. You wanted to go on yes. to other things. We'll talk about that in a moment. But when they came up with a script about your demise, did you have any input <laughs> as to how you would like to go? You know, drowning, you know... I once uh, said I'd like to smother under my ex-wife. <laughs> <laughs> That, that, that's been done. Yeah. <laughs> when I was the man from Atlantis, I can hold my breath a long time. Uh, I, you know, I asked, first of all, I've been with this guy for seven years, yeah. and I feel very close to him, and, and contrary to what some things have printed, I didn't find him boring. I just right. felt that I'd done all I could with him. And I wanted some dignity, so I, you know, and go out as a hero. And that once I heard they were going to shoot me, as I jumped in front of somebody that was going to get shot. But right. then they just shot me the year before. That's right. You know, and we have the, the yearly demise of somebody, or almost demise, you know. So I could either be drunked off to a sanitarium or into a flaming jet or something like that. So I uh, found out, as you said, the human speed bump. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you heard that. <laughs> oh, boy. It was, it was very dramatic for me, very... Yeah. Little tears and everything. How did you make the decision to do this now? To leave a show, you got a hit show. That's a my God, have you got a hit show? Mm -hmm. That is still uh, obviously it was not for the no, not for you, you, you know, being paid well. Obviously, I was getting paid well, and it was a little frightening to sort of snip off the inflow from your cash flow. You know, the yeah. outflow hasn't changed a bit. I want you to know, yeah. just really going out there. Oh God, that's why I'm selling things. You know, like boots. Yeah, sure. What size do you wear? Be perfect. Yes, they're good. Fine. Um, and it, so it was a difficult decision because basically I'm a very tight person with a penny. I'm not Somebody very... Somebody are you a frugal? Uh, or is that a kind word? That's a, it has more letters than cheap, so it must be nicer. <laughs> it's a nicer word than cheap. I'm, I'm pretty... I, I, you closely watch it. You watch money? Well, I, you know, I've... Did you been, come from a, a, a family that didn't have a lot of money? Well, we didn't have a lot of money. We right. had just enough, right. you know. Not a lot of frills, no trips, no extra stuff. You know, you got... I can remember getting like fifty dollars to buy all my school clothes, you know. Right. And what can you buy for fifty dollars yeah. nowadays? Then you could buy more. But I, you know, out in this town when I first got here, I was working for four dollars an hour as a carpenter, you know. And so it kills me to write a check for twelve dollars an hour for a carpenter doing work that I can do better. Mm -hmm. I get an attack. My wife has to write all the checks. So you house. still have that? Uh... Yeah. Yeah, I get a stomach ache. Anything over about a hundred dollars, and I, I get a real. Mm -hmm. I do. I get a real stomach ache, and I just. I go, honey, <laughs> uh, I need to be paid today. You know the way that's good, though, because it keeps it, it keeps it all in perspective. Yeah. It keeps and it all in perspective. I like, like, now I think I have like $8 on my, and, and, and I'll have it for a week. <laughs> <laughs> okay, we'll come back and see if we can part you with that 8 bucks. We'll be right back. Thank you, Doc. We're talking with Patrick Duffy. <laughs> You've probably been asked all these questions before, but it, it, it's, it's intriguing because when you're on a show like that, did you have second guesses about... What did, you, what did your family think when you went in and said, I think I'll uh, go on to other things? My, my wife and I make decisions jointly, so that was no big surprise. But I, my 10-year-old, my who has been watching me on Dallas since he can remember watching yeah. television, you know, seven and a half years, one, he goes to a school where people in the business go. So <laughs> one morning I knew I'd made the decision. I was going to go in and talk to Lorimar that day, and I told him, I said, listen, uh, at school you probably start hearing some rumors, and I want you to know from me first that... Uh, I'm not going to be on Dallas anymore. I'm going to quit the show. I'm going to leave. And he just 
nonplussed. He said, fine, what show are you going to do now? Yeah. And I said, well, I don't have a show to do now. He said, you quit Dallas and you don't have a show? <laughs> I think he was talking to my lawyer, my agent, my yeah. lawyer. I mean, it was amazing. He had a perfect grasp of the reality of this business. <laughs> don't let go sometimes. He you knows what he's talking about. How are you feeling, by the way? I'm going to be available soon. What are, what are all the trials and tribulations they put you through in seven years? Oh. Aside of being well, shot, uh, uh, run over. Uh, shot and run over. But I, I, th my biggest tribulation was that I was never successful at anything. Yeah. You know, and that, you know, it's hard to every day go to work as the hero and stand up for a truth, justice, and American way when you know you're going to get a pie in the face, you know, when you go around every party. Bobby tried everything in the world. I ran for state senator, and I got it and failed at it miserably. Right. I tried to start a construction company, failed at that miserably. My marriage, right yeah. in the old toilet. Uh, not to mention trying to have children numerous times, right. which obviously it wasn't my fault. <laughs> uh, for lack of trying. Yeah. And uh, what else did I try to do? Construction company, real estate I tried to do. Everything I tried to do, Just I failed. Fail. Yeah, and somehow, bless them, those people out there who watch Dallas always were rooting for me. I yeah. mean, it was amazing. Yeah. Thank you very much. They can relate to that. <laughs> a lot of people can relate to things not going so well. Yeah, so... Uh, now, what, what's the first show you did since then? Have you... Well, see, that's it. Everybody keeps thinking that, well, you quit Dallas, the number one show in the universe. So you must, the next you, know, you want to do be... Hamlet or brush up on your Rachmaninoff or something. I'm, I was a goat. Uh huh. I, uh, I knew what I knew about this. That's why I asked you. You'd think, you know, from Dallas, you'd skyrocket yes. right to. Yes. Uh... There wasn't a forsooth or not to be in the entire script. No, you said you played a played a goat. They don't goat. tell them what you're talking. Uh, uh, They're goat. talking about a goat. And we're talking about a goat like that. <laughs> Yeah, uh, Irwin Allen, who does those huge, yes. spectacular shows, is making an instant classic. He's making Alice in Wonderland over again. That's with right. With actors from every branch of the business working one and two days, going in there. I got in there, put on a little goat costume. How were you lucky enough to land this plum roll? I mean, <laughs> I mean George C. Scott must have wanted this badly. How, how did, how did, how did you manage to get the goat part? Well, I, I, I don't know. I did, Duffy begins with a D. I was at the top of the list. I don't know. It was, you uh, actually have worn a little? Yeah, I wore a little fuzzy hat with horns oh, and antlers and, um, and a big goatee and whiskers, and I had hooves that were like this. You do a nice... Ba nice yes, note. I do. And that's the way you talk to And that's what I talk to her, and I, where are you going, little girl? You left Dallas for, you left Dallas for, for this. Well, uh, <laughs> you know, a butt of another kind, let's put it that way, right? Yeah. Uh, but uh, it was fun. I'll tell you, I yeah. had more fun doing that. I was in a... You in say a, there are a lot of major people. And in, in a little uh, train car with Pat Morita right. playing a horse, Japanese horse, this tall, uh, Steve Allen playing the man in the white paper suit, right. and um, one of those talk show hosts playing the conductor. Was that right? One of those people. One huh? of those guys. Daytime. Yeah. Yeah. Sounds anyway, good. But it was fun. It was. I just got out and I enjoyed myself for a day, and I was still working. I had to hey, pack a little away, you know. So, uh, that wouldn't even pay for the pool heater we're putting in. So, you know. <laughs> you finally put a, somebody told me you finally put a finally put a pool heater in. <laughs> My kids were complaining because they can only swim like one month out of the year, you know, because it's too well, cold. Well, you've been on this show seven years. Were you waiting to see how it was going to go? I was looking at the market, you know. <laughs> well, I, was like, I mean, after four years, couldn't you have popped for the heater there? <laughs> I had one of those coffee warmers over the edge of the pool. I'd plug it everybody. <laughs> But I just thought, you know, well, we're in Southern California, and it's hot, Super. and, you know, the kids need to refresh themselves when they go outside. <laughs> you just didn't want to go for the heater. I didn't pop for the heater, but okay. I promised them now that I would, okay. so now I have to do it. Are you going to be working on your uh, singing career? Aha. Uh -huh. You're going to go for the singing That's career, right. right? This is a, 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 a persistent thing that has followed me against all sound judgment from, you know, I, I made a record in, in Europe with a, with a French singer that sold over a million copies. A million copies. A million copies. <laughs> a, million? a million copies. Is that true? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. It went uh, a million copies. I think means uh, like five hundred thousand or something means it goes gold. Millions, like and platinum, then, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, platinum. It was a platinum. And you did this with a French with a French singer, a French singer named Marie Mathieu. And then for some, and I did the Barbara Mandrell show where I sang. And yeah. I'm not a singer, and I, I really have never laid claim to being a well, singer. How could you sell a million copies of a record? I I I, I don't know. 
Do you think the French singer might have helped a little? Or? Uh, well, she, she sang loud, I mean, if that counts. But it was an equal song. It was a duet. We sang back and forth. I even went to France and did some television shows yeah. and, 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 and lip synced to it. Uh, live singing is not, that's why they invent all this machinery is to make you sound. So you can go like into the studio sing. and. And then I've been hosting a lot of country music award shows, and it follows me. And then I wrote a song. I actually gave an idea uh, of saying that I used to say when people would ask me like that fall, I'm yeah. about to finish doing those, because they say, they asked, how do you know when you're, you're getting a little too old? And I said, when my mind makes a date my body can't keep. Is that the name of the song? And so I gave it to my friend R.C. Bannon, who is married to Louise Mandrell. Right. And he wrote a song, when my mind makes a date my body can't keep. And he gave me equal credit. It wasn't really equal credit. It was sort of like me buying the pizza while he wrote the song. But, uh, how, and did then, the lyrics, how did the lyrics go? just happened to have it because I was threatened on? no because I was threatened that uh, I might have to sing it and I thought I could read well, it I don't want to put you on <laughs> <laughs> grocery list it says pool heater pool heater <laughs> stall the kids <laughs> get the kids a little tell them it's July what are they to swim that's, in. Right. that's the way you should do it now I, I'm just going to read one little line All in right. here now, it's when my mind makes a date, Ma, because I really don't sing. I need a lot of help and earphones, you know. You guys don't know when you go into a recording studio and sing, you have the song in your ear while you're singing. Right. And, you know, I can sort of sing if I'm following somebody. Okay. But I, I have to really work up to well, happy birthday. Just, just you know what I mean? <laughs> so, hmm, hip, 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 hip. Anyway. So, um, it says, here I am pushing my 40s, feeling like I'm in my 20s. All of my friends have a couple of kids by now. They're all really nice fellas, but I think they're a little bit jealous when they say they worry about my health and how long before I throw in the towel. It's when my mind makes a date, my body can't sleep. When I lay down beside her and all I want to do is sleep. Mm -hmm. I'll continue to play the field till I no longer feel the heat. And my mind makes a date, my body can't keep. Not bad. Good lyrics. Yeah. One more time. One yeah, more time. Tempo. This time with a little guitar. We'll take a break. We'll be back with Jimmy Allen and the Amherst Saxophone Quartet. Thanks for coming.